Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking at how to know what's test. And this is generally quite a difficult one. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through an actual example. We've got a very minimal application and we're going to go through the process of figuring out what we need to do to make sure it's, you know, uh, comfortably tested. Uh, the reason that knowing what's test is generally quite difficult is because, you know, different companies, different products, different businesses have different priorities. So knowing what's test is going to be quite bespoke or it's going to be quite specific to the company because you want to test what your users use in your product, which might be you know different from, from someone else. So knowing what's test, there's not one size fits all generally, but there are a few steps or a few rules I think you can follow that will get you 80, 90% of the way. And generally for me, I've got three steps that will cover the majority of what I need. So let's have a quick look through those and then we can jump into the example. So step number one is to write specifications and not test. Uh, this is something I heard from a colleague, which I think originally came from Martin Fowler, but don't focus too much on the terminology, just focus on the message behind it. So when we think about test, it's easy to jump to the implementation or to the code, you know, have a look at the code and try test specific lines of code or the way the code behaves. Typically what you want is to completely forget about the implementation. And this is what they mean by specification. So when you think about a specification, it's, it's almost a requirement. Right, so a requirement for the feature, it describes the way the feature should behave, right? Not the way the code should behave, which is two separate things. And um, so we want to have this mindset early on, and we'll see what this means uh, in the example later on. Number two is to identify any dependencies, right? So does your feature depend on uh, third-party services or libraries? Does it depend on um, APIs being up? Uh, can you guarantee they're going to be up? Does it depend on user interaction? All these things you can't quite control or you don't have guarantee that they're going to behave the way you expect them to. So you definitely want to identify those so you can put some tests in place. And third of all, just edge cases. Um, there's a rule zero one many, basically anything else that you think could be an issue. You want to have a think about that, you know, discuss it with different teams, what could go wrong. Maybe that's something that we can look into as well. So let's jump into the example. So I've got a very simple application here on the right hand side. Um, I've been given some requirements and I've implemented it and what they wanted is a simple Google style search but for gist instead. So we type in a username, so I'm just going to go to my username, we hit search and we should see a list of uh, the gist descriptions and if we click onto it, it's going to open up the actual gist on GitHub. That's pretty much the feature, quite simple. So how would you go about testing this? So we're not going to look into the code of this at all right and um, i'll leave a link to github so you can have a, a look to see how it works feel free to do that but for this example what we want to do is we want to write the test and my hope for this is that we can figure out what's test and in theory we can also write the test without even knowing how the implementation is done at all so let's have a quick look at that so first what we're going to do is we're just going to write a comment for the three steps so first of all we're just going to pop in we know we want to do specifications uh, dependencies and finally, let's just do uh, edge oops, edge cases slash zero, uh, zero one many. Let's spell edge. There we go. So we're just going to fill these in, and that is essentially going to be your test, right? So let's walk through this. So specifications. What did I say at the beginning? Well, it's quite simple. We want to be able to enter a username, hit search, and see uh, a list of gists. So that could be the first specification or requirement, right? And I'm going to write this in the style that I'm used to for, for my tests. Um, but you, you might have seen kind of different styles like should do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to do it in the style that this feature does X, Y, and Z. So in this case, this feature, you know, maybe let's pop that in a comment, um, displays just descriptions uh, when searching with a username. Uh, and actually, I'm going to pop in valid username, right? I like to add a bit of context. Um, just to make it clear what we're doing here. So that's one requirement. Um, I think the second thing I said here was, yeah, the links. So um, so the displayed gists should link to uh, GitHub, right? That's just one way of writing it. Uh, in terms of features, that's that's pretty much it, right? There's not not really much, much else going on there. So let's just tie that one up. That's the general features. Let's jump on to dependencies. So I know for a fact that we're going to have to reach out to the uh, GitHub API for this, right? So we know that there's going to be an API dependency and the second dependency is the user. I know that I've opened this up with a user input, so there's going to be a user typing things in 
So that's the two things we can't really control. Um, so what we, what we want to think about is what could go wrong. So the API, first of all, it could return a 500, it could return you know, a 4x, it could be down, it could time out. Um, there's a few different things going on there. So typically what I would do is I would you know, type all these out. So it could time out, um, it could just be down completely, uh, it could, you know, 400, etc. There's a few different things here. Um, and you might want to discuss this with you know the team, but you want to figure out what do I want to happen for each of these scenarios, right? And then for each of those scenarios, whatever you want to happen, you want to make a test. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to treat these all as one. I'm just going to treat them all as um, if there's any API issue, just show an error message, and that's enough for this for this feature, right? So an error is shown if um, API if well, I think of for any API issue, right? Again, typically you might want to have two, three, four tests for each specific issue, right? Because if you test for just the timeout, um, you know you might see different behavior for else uh, for something else. But I'm just, just to keep it simple, uh, I'm going to keep the one that captures everything here. Um, from a user perspective, again, you need to start thinking what could the user do that might you know have some weird behavior. You know, they could you know spam the the search button. They could type in um, really kind of long usernames or you know weird characters, etc. They could type in no username. Um, there's lots of different things here. Which ones do we care about? Which ones do we want to handle? In this case, let's just say the only one we want to handle is that they can't um, they can't type in an empty username, right? So in this case, what I've done is if you type an empty one, then we get this error message here. So let's just say username um, is required. So that's just one of the specifications again. Username is required, um, so it cannot be empty. Uh, actually, yeah, just keep it as username is required. Again, if you want to validate other functionality, this is where you do it. And the final one here is any edge cases. Is there anything that we can think of? Zero, one, many. So we'll, yeah, we'll, I can't really think of any edge cases right now, but I know that we could get zero gists, right? Which is something we've not really um, figured out here. So so maybe we want to show a message for that. If a uh, user has no gists, um, we could do the one and many. I know that we that could be handled as well in this top one. Um, I can't really think of any edge cases right now, but the good thing about this is, you know, as this, you know, as you release your product and you might, you know, start to see, you know, bugs or different issues, this is where you can, you know, you can add them, right? Weird things, but I think this is okay for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove these top comments here, right? So this is just left with all these tests, and this is, you know, this is a very good place to start. I think I think this covers the majority of the tests for this feature for this application, right? Um, if you don't know, if you're not sure at this point, okay, how do I know I've, I've done enough? How do I know this is you know adequate for what I want to test? What what to do? Think about it this way: is if you take this, you know, these few kind of specifications and requirements that you've typed out, if you give them to someone that hasn't seen the app, that hasn't seen the requirements or the stories, whatever it is, would they be able to, you know, would they be able to tell you first of all how the the app should function, or would they be able to recreate it, right? And I think. What we have here is enough basically to recreate the functionality right so it's got the main kind of functionality there in specifications that will kind of give them the happy path and then we've got a few different error scenarios here that handles the things that we care about um everything else is you know not too relevant it's not too important for us in this case right it was we'd add a test for it so that's kind of one way to tell um if you've got the right number of tests right so what i'm going to do is let me Grab all these. Um, I'm going to move the comments. I'm just going to turn these into tests, just as they are. So I'm working in our React app here. So this is the kind of the um, syntax for a test. But of course, whatever language uh, you're working with, just convert them into the style that's, that's required. Um, so this has got the test name, and then I know that these are going to be async, and then this just has the um, the callback, All right? And that's it. So now I've got these five tests. And now we start implementing them. So what I'm going to do is I've got the tests here on the right. So I'm just going to copy and paste them in. So I'm going to leave the link to GitHub so you can go through and kind of see how these tests um, came about. But we can have a look at a couple, hopefully to see how simple they are and to see that, you know, you can write these tests without understanding any of the implementation. Um, you know, you can understand the interfaces or the contracts, but not the underlying code, right? So if we look at the maybe the most simple one. Um, so I'll expand them all so you can kind of pause and have a look at them if you want in the video. Um, but if we look at a very simple one, 
which is um, this one here, right? Username search is required. So the test we're doing here is as a user's perspective, I come in here, hit search, search them as you. So this is how I would behave as a user, you know, not typed in anything, quick search. So we look at this test and it should be extremely clear even to someone that's non-technical what's going on here, right? So um, the gist search, this is the name of the, the component here, right? So the gist search is rendered, right? So that's kind of the, the technical part. Um, the users come in and this is what they're doing. They're just clicking on the button or anything that's in this case, they're just, it's just searching for, it's looking for the text search. So it's clicking on that and we expect to see the error message. So that should be in the document. That's the test, right? Search here, there we go. So if I was testing this manually, that's what I would do. And the test pretty much, you know, writes that down word for word, right? Again, this test might not be the most comprehensive test, but this is just kind of an example. Um, if we go up to the top one, which is a bit, a bit bigger, which is just, if we type in the username, and click search you should see that so as you know as what we did there we've got so if you know this bit for just a moment we're running the search we're getting the input we're putting in a username in this case we're you know we're stubbing or we're mocking the api right and this is because we want the tests to be deterministic right we don't want it to actually go to the api at this point um you know maybe you do that in integration tests but for these unit tests we want to assert that the behavior assuming that the api returns whatever Right, assuming that the API works, um, we want a specific result. So in this case, again, we're typing in the username, we're hitting search, and then we're checking that um, the displays are, are correct, right? And the top bit here, the bit that we just skipped, this is just the kind of, it's not really implementation detail, this is understanding the API or the interface that you're working for, working with. So in this case, we know that we're gonna be hitting the GitHub API. So what we've done is we just said, all right, when there's a get to um, this URL, then return this value, right? Return OK, which is 200, this value. So assuming this scenario, this is what should happen. Um, and we've got the, the opposite one for the, the failure. So if we go down to, let's close this down. If we go down to the error, when we get, you know, this just then return a bad request. So this is failed. And again, you might want to do, this is, um, I think this one's a 401, but you might want to do different ones, um, different error scenarios timeouts, etc., and you should see something like this. Um, oops, something went wrong. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully um, this, this video has kind of shown you how to generally um, get to the point where you've got a decent number of tests. Again, there's gonna be still you know, a small percentage of um, tests that might not be covered, and that's completely dependent on your application. There might be things that you know about the, the code base or the APIs that you want to add additional tests around because you know it might be a bit flaky, etc. You know, that's absolutely fine. But for, for the most part, I think something like this, following these steps, is a good point to start. So um, yeah, let me know what you think in the, the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, have a good day. See you in the next one.